growing concern over the competency of an elected official in Salt Lake County. Why some say it's time for Gary Ott to resign. Storms are wrapping up. Warmer temperatures headed our way. We'll have a complete look coming up. Then stuck in the I-15 shutdown with a baby coming any minute. Really quite lucky that we were right in the area when, when that came in. How a group of South Jordan paramedics came to the rescue of a soon-to-be mother. Taking breakfast out of the cafeteria. Why some schools are seeing a huge difference. And more clown threats here in northern Utah. What prompted some parents in Davis County to pull their kids from school? We begin with developing news in the southeastern United States where Hurricane Matthew is quickly moving toward the coastline. This is a live look at Hollywood, Florida. That's in Broward County, where the mayor has ordered all roads closed this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bob Evans. And I'm Hope Woodside. Matthew is already being blamed for more than 100 deaths in the Caribbean, and there are fears it could take more lives here in the U.S. Fox's Joe Waldman has the latest. Roughly 2 million people along the southeast coast of the U.S. are being warned to head inland from Florida to South Carolina and here in Georgia. What the scientists tell us is that this is likely the largest and most powerful hurricane to hit the United States in a, in a decade or so. With Hurricane Matthew roaring back up to Category 4 strength and packing 140 mile an hour winds, President Obama declared an emergency in Florida, ordering federal aid to supplement local storm response efforts and authorizing federal agencies to take action. There are those who doubt the intensity or severity of the storm. They need only look at the images that are uh, coming back from Haiti. Matthew has already slammed parts of the Caribbean. In Haiti alone, it has left more than 100 dead. Back home, National Guard troops have been called up. Many senior citizens and hospital patients in coastal areas are being moved inland. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Are you willing to take a chance to risk your life? With gas, food, and other staples now in short supply in many places and hundreds of flights canceled, thousands are choosing to take advantage of emergency shelters. So it's too risky to stay and just wanted to stay safe and really hope we have the grace to accept the aftermath. Here in Georgia, the state's entire coast is under a mandatory evacuation with storm surge predicted between 7 and 11 feet. In Savannah, Georgia, Joel Waldman. Fox News. We continue our Hurricane Matthew coverage with Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Brett Benzer, who's standing by in the Weather Center. Okay, Brett, where's the storm going now? Uh, it's right over the Grand Bahama right now. Uh, it's actually, uh, it, it looks like it's just about made landfall near uh, Freeport. And and if you look, it, the, the eye just completely regenerated. There's a look at the eye, and it, it begins to look really mushy and kind of falling apart. Uh, this happens all the time as, as hurricanes uh, near land, and there we go. So we have eyewall replacement. Uh, the storm is still strong. It'll redevelop now, and, and it, it weakens slightly when you have eyewall replacement, but then picks right back up. Uh, if you look at this, this is where the strongest part of the storm is, just northeast of the eyewall, and that is what is moving over Grand Bahama right now. And then if you look at just the, the torrential rain wrapped around the storm, uh, that's that's now we're starting to move away from the strongest winds, but you still have the torrential rain. We have rain around Fort Myers. I mean, you know, the precipitation stretches well to the north all the way along the coast. And again, this is going to have a huge impact. Here's a look at the forecast path. A category four storm continues and, and makes its way up uh, along the east coast of Florida. Likely looks like it, the best chance for landfall or what we think would be landfall would be around Daytona Beach as a category three. The, the storm will continue north and then again, the forecast path takes it back around and potentially could return to Florida and the Bahamas and areas it's already hit as a tropical storm. Partly cloudy skies here closer to home. We've had a few uh, showers that tried to get started earlier today over the higher elevations and over the Wasatch Front. Isolated shower moving through the Salt Lake Valley. Uh, the best chance of precipitation right along the Idaho border, but that's very sparse as well. We'll talk about what to expect the rest of tonight. We'll look at the rest of the week and, and uh, really nice looking weekend in front of us coming up.
There are new details about a former Utah State University football player who has been charged with four counts of rape. The Cache County Attorney's Office filed charges of rape and aggravated kidnapping against Tory Green today. The alleged, the alleged attacks happened between 2013 and this year. Green went on to play for the Atlanta Falcons, which dropped him from the roster when rape allegations surfaced over the summer. Here at home, there's more controversy surrounding the Salt Lake County Recorder's office tonight. The Salt Lake County Council is convinced 64-year-old recorder Gary Ott is not healthy and is being manipulated by his staff. A recent audit found Ott has very little oversight or involvement in the office. And when county councilors followed up with questions about it, they became even more concerned about his health. Fox 13's Dora Scheidel joins us from the Salt Lake County office complex with more. Dora. Several people told me today, Bob and Hope, that they are convinced that Gary Ott is a sick man and incapable of doing the job he was elected to do. But they're even more concerned with what they believe to be a cover-up on behalf of his staff. He was almost incoherent. He Salt Lake County counselors tell me it's clear that recorder Gary Ott is not well. It was incredibly painful to watch on Tuesday as he tried to answer those questions. Those questions were simple, like what's the name of your deputy recorder? And we asked his address and he couldn't tell us his address. And so there were things that showed that he couldn't answer basic questions. But his chief deputy recorder, Julie Dole, continues to insist his health is fine. That is just, in my opinion, blatantly false statement by her. Elected in 2014 for a six-year term, there's no state statute that allows the council to remove Ott from office. But now a group of 22 concerned citizens, including Sean Harris, are planning to call for an investigation of Chief Deputy Dole for malfeasance. I just noticed the deliberate attempt to either mask the situation or outright hide the situation that's very serious. In response to my request for an interview, Mr. Ott sent me the following statement. The audit clearly states that the office is meeting its statutory duties and functioning in a manner beneficial to the public. As I stated to the council, I am proud of the office and the work we're doing. The allegations we have heard go beyond the scope of the audit and are personal attacks that are unfounded. But counselors are concerned these are not the words of Mr. Ott. Quite frankly, it makes me mad that it seems that people are taking advantage of him. And ultimately say this is not fair to the taxpayers. And right now, $180,000 salary for somebody who the audit report said is not in heavily involved with the day-to-day -day operations of his company or his office. That's a lot of money to be spending for somebody who's not involved. The county council is also looking at decreasing ought salary during budget discussions. They're also reaching out to the legislature to see if they can come up with some kind of state statute that would allow them to remove an elected official from office under these kinds of circumstances. Reporting live from the county office building, I'm Dora Scheidel, Fox 13 News, Utah. An investigation is underway after a body was found yesterday in Butterfield Canyon wrapped in plastic. A passerby found the remains and called police. The body was taken to the medical examiner. Unified police are calling it a suspicious death. It, it's going to be a, a canvas of the area, any other evidence of the area that can match back to, to what we found. Um, obviously, with, with the weather that we've had lately, it's going to make it quite difficult. Any objects, items, prints, anything that we can find. Fox 13's Robert Boyd will have more on this story later in this newscast. Tonight, these paramedics are being hailed as heroes. They came to a pregnant woman's rescue when she was stuck in yesterday's traffic jam on I-15. Now, we told you their story last night at 9, but new at 5, we're now hearing from those paramedics. Fox 13's Aubrey McKay has their story. As much as we try to call these firefighters and paramedics the hero in this story, they say the real hero is mom. But this one just worked out perfect. We got there right in the nick of time. These firefighters and paramedics, like many of us, were stuck in the traffic jam on I-15 yesterday. Then they got a call saying another person stuck in that traffic was in labor. We just kind of lucked upon it. We just happened to be in the right area and... and Took us about five minutes from when we found out about it to, to actually get on scene. We found the, the description of the vehicle with a screaming lady inside of it. These firefighters and paramedics arrived on scene and quickly got to work. 
we hit the ground running. She was, she was ready to go. So baby came fast. I'm, I'm not the hero. It's, it's very much a crew effort. Josh Brown is the paramedic who helped deliver the baby. Deliveries, usually the mom does all the work, and so it went really pretty well. The, the baby uh, mom did the hardest part of the work, and we were there basically to assist. But that assistance meant mom got to deliver her baby in the ambulance rather than in her car. It wasn't mom's first baby. She knew what to expect, which is why she was... We're excited that we were there in time. Mom wasn't alone in her car. Paramedics say as far as they understand, dad was there too. But no matter who was there, without emergency lights and sirens, they weren't going to get anywhere. If people wouldn't have been stuck in that traffic and, and blocking the emergency lane, those people could have drove themselves to the hospital. These paramedics say they're just happy they were in the right place at the right time. That's what we gleam our, our careers off of, are those good experiences that we have. So, and that was definitely one of them. Now, these guys say when stuck in a traffic jam, it may be tempting to go out into the emergency lane and see what's happening, but they say please keep those emergency lanes clear and only use them for a true emergency, like taking someone to the hospital. In South Jordan, Aubrey McKay, Fox 13 News, Utah. Another Utah school is dealing with clown-related threats. How students are reacting this afternoon. Might want to sit down on your fainting couch for this one. Some people don't follow express lane laws. We found some of them, and we're going to show you after the break. And President Obama's approval rating is at an all-new level how it compares to past presidents after the break. You're watching Fox 13 News. Let's connect. Utah now has the longest HOV lane in the country. And the Utah Department of Transportation and the Utah Highway Patrol want drivers to use it correctly. Fox 13's Max Roth joins us with that story, Max. Yeah, thanks, Hope and Bob. You know, it might not seem like the biggest news flash, but some drivers do not obey express lane rules. They cross the double white line. They put mannequins in the passenger seat. Really, UHP said they saw that, uh, and they use the express on-ramps. Our photographer, Doug Eldridge, parked in view of this express lane on-ramp. Which car has just one person? Trick question, it's both of them. Here's a station wagon. It looks like just one person. And how about the white truck next to it? This maroon Honda is actually doing it right with an express sticker in the window. It took photographer Doug 10 minutes to spot those cars, showing the need for a crackdown. We're doing a enforcement uh, enhancement or enforcement blitz on the express lanes. UHP and UDOT want the express lane on I-15 pristine by the book especially now they have a reputation to protect. It's actually the longest in the entire country. Longest express lane in the country. Photographer Doug spent the day on the Blitz watching and learning from Trooper Shaylee Hawley. He's got a kid. Enforcement means pulling up to a lot of cars and seeing little kids or stickers or people slouching in that passenger seat. And then she spots a violation and radios it in. Salt Lake 447, 1060 on the left. Turns out the silver SUV has a toddler in the back seat, so there's no express lane violation, but Trooper Holly saw something more important. She had a toddler in the back seat. Um, it wasn't quite properly restrained correctly. So a stern lecture about chest restraints, she moves on and spots. It looks like he's got a trailer, doesn't he? A trailer. And if you're thinking, so what? You haven't read the signs. So start reading. Mile post 299, I-15. Before, you have to park on the shoulder of I-15. Now home to the longest express lane in the country. It's the longest in the country. If you're interested in getting one of those stickers that gives you access to the express lanes, we will put a link in this story on fox13now.com. And I mentioned longest express lane in the country, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks. In live in the studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah.
Thank you, Max. The New Jersey Transit train involved in last month's crash accelerated just before the accident. The National Transportation Safety Board says information from recording devices on the train show it went from 8 to 21 miles per hour before it hit the platform. If you remember, one woman was killed and more than 110 others hurt. The NTSB says the investigation could take a year or more to complete. More Americans approve of the job President Obama is doing than at any other time during his second term. A new CNN poll says the president's approval rating stands at 55 percent. That puts him on par with Presidents Clinton and Reagan during their second terms. It's almost double President George W. Bush's approval rating. A Marine who lost both of his arms in combat six years ago says he is one step closer to realizing his dreams of becoming a chef. Marine Sergeant John Peck underwent a 14-hour double arm transplant in August and today he held a news conference in Boston with a team of surgeons. An empty chair was there in honor of the donor. Peck promised his death will not be for nothing, that he will look at his arms every day and remember his donor's selflessness until he dies. done it again. It's amazing. Hope would side this Organ donation yeah. is amazing. It is amazing. amazing. Check it, X I mean, on well, your driver's license well, and, and look what happens. And Gift of Hope has been your franchise for some time now. Yeah, and we've got, so we have some really things. great stories coming they, up. Yeah, yeah the November. producers doubled up on you there. It, it, it was a military person. <laughs> military person and, <laughs> and, and a organ transplant. donation. Yeah. yeah, but can you imagine to, he has no. he he has arms yeah, again. It's an amazing a whole story, new world yeah. for him. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. what a wonderful great thing. story. Great story. Uh, we're going to show you a, a look at Matthew. We showed the radar a minute ago. We showed the forecast path. Here's a look from the satellite of uh, what the storm looks like right now. Again, uh, just the latest update uh, as far as uh, the actual location is five miles south of Freeport, Grand Bahama. So uh, you, you see, there's the eye right there, and it's moving over. Uh, and radar, it's easier to pick out the uh, the eye and the eye wall, which has redeveloped, reformed. Uh, a little bit tougher to see it in satellite. And satellite doesn't update as often as radar, so we just might not have the most recent image here in the satellite. Uh, but you get an idea of just how big, I mean, you know, we have clouds, we have rain, we have storm all through Florida, while the eye is still uh, significantly far away. Uh, again, the path is to take it right along the East Coast and, and uh, the, the National Weather Service office in Jacksonville mentioned that if things hold the way they look right now, and that's still an if, but if they hold the way they look like right now, it would be the strongest storm to hit in uh, about 118 years uh, in Jacksonville. So uh, really the potential for a lot of damage with this storm. We have, uh, so we have a lot of storms moving into the Pacific Northwest. Those are going to stay north of us though, as, uh, as we do have a bit of a trough over the state today. That's why we had some of those clouds and a few showers here and there. Uh, but this is going to flatten out. So by, by tomorrow, and especially as we head into the weekend, we get more of what's known as a zonal flow, just everything moving from the west towards the east. And so those storms you see moving into Washington right now will stay north of us. Uh, as far as the showers today, again, we had some precipitation that rolled through uh, a little bit of the Wasatch Front, the southern end of the Salt Lake Valley earlier today. And then over the higher elevations, that, that's dissipated and moved on. The best chance for precipitation was right here along the Idaho border. That's where we've seen most of the activity. That's where we continue to see some showers rolling through. And we could see a little bit of rain around Bear Lake. And you see some of the higher elevations picking up a bit of snow on the, in the extreme northern part of Utah. 56 currently in Ogden, about the same in Salt Lake and West Valley. Low 50s in Draper and 50 right now in Heber, 54 in Vernal, 57 in Price. We're in the 60s in Blanding and Page, uh, Milford and Cedar City as well, and low 70s in St. George. 42 tonight along the Wasatch Front, clearing skies, chilly temperatures, and not just for the Wasatch Front. I mean, a lot of cool spots. 30s in Provo and Ogden, 20s in Evanston and Park City and Milford, uh, near 20s in Cedar City, Delta right there around freezing. So cool temperatures with clearing skies statewide. Tomorrow, a cold start to the day, 45 along the Wasatch Front. With plenty of sunshine, though, we do warm up into the upper 60s by the afternoon. Near 60 in Park City, 60 in Price, 70 in Cedar City. Uh, we're into the upper 60s around Ely and Elko. Wendover right there in the low 60s. It'll be a really nice day tomorrow across the state with plenty of sunshine. Seven day forecast shows nice looking weekend, increasing clouds Sunday, Monday in southern Utah. Isolated shower possible. Better chance of thunderstorms by Tuesday, Wednesday. 
for Northern Utah. Great end of the week, great weekend. Early next week, some more clouds, and we do see a chance of thunderstorms rolling into Northern Utah by about the middle of the next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we'll get that all figured out as we get closer, but nice weekend. Some thunderstorms returning. Great looking weekend. All right, quickly, I got to tell you, I interviewed this family yesterday. Their story for gift of was, hope. Yeah, it was so it's going to be so amazing. And you know, I have to look at the interviews again. Yeah. And I just there's a lot of Kleenex at your desk. It's <laughs> tears. But it's going well, to it's going to be, be really good. Well, we got the right person. Can't doing wait it. to see it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Me too. Well, they spend most of the day learning, but some Utah students are now including breakfast in their classroom time, and teachers say it's a good thing. And from warehouse to your doorstep, what actually happens to your online orders? We're going to take a look inside of one of Amazon's shipping facilities after the break. The fall season here on Fox 13 continues picking up steam tonight with all new episodes of Rosewood and Pitch. Fox's Michelle Polino spoke with stars from both shows about what's coming up. Oh, She's crazy! You gotta protect yourself at all times, right? Fox's Thursday night dramas are heating up. First, over on Rosewood, there's a big story twist. Okay? I'm Kate. I'm worried about you. Rosewood's gonna have, um... He's going to have a life-altering e uh, event or situation that's going to challenge his perspective on the world. Um, he's always so open and optimistic, but something happens that, that severely challenges that. Right. What are you doing? It's my mean face. That's the that mean. face says mug me. And sparks will eventually start to fly between his character and Vila. Rosie and, and Via thought that they were actually going to get busy. Um, they didn't get busy. And um, so now at the very opening of this season, we're uh, repairing our relationship with each other. And, um, and eventually uh, we'll work our way back to where we used to be in some type of romantic situation. Be Mark! While visiting the cast of Pitch at Petco Park, the stars told us that the series will get started with a mix of on and off the field storylines. The way it works is you hit their picture. They get to hit me, I know the code. Baseball is a backdrop of the show. It's mostly about the inner workings, what these players go through, uh, and, and uh, the on field stuff. I mean, we have some episodes that are pretty heavy on field, but for the most part, it's what happens behind the scenes. The cool thing about the show is that we do a lot of flashbacks, just like the West Wing. So we get to, you get to see the relationships between me and my mom, um, how I how I come to having my agent, Amelia, um, with my brother. I mean, everyone, you know, you get to learn a lot about everyone. Is he scared of hurting me? While Kylie Bunbury looks good playing a major league ball player, she told us that she hasn't gone method yet. I carry my mitt with me a lot. I carry the ball with me a lot. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I don't Daniel Day-Lewis this stuff. I'm not out here like, mm, t call me Ginny, and I'm just throwing the ball into my mitt all the time, but I'm, I definitely, um, yeah, I have my, I have my things that I do to get more comfortable with the game for sure. Again. In Hollywood, Michelle Polino, Fox News. You can catch all an all new episode of Rosewood tonight at seven o'clock, followed by Pitch at eight and Fox 13 News at nine. <laughs> Stocks. They are a little changed today ahead of tomorrow's jobs report. A rally in financial shares offset declines in bond proxies. The Dow is down 13. NASDAQ is down 9. S&P is up about 1. Walmart and Amazon are responding to complaints about a controversial costume by pulling it from their websites. The tranny granny, quote unquote, set, includes a dress, headscarf, and padding for the chest and rear end. Lots of people online complain that it's offensive to the transgender community. Walmart and Amazon say the costume is made by a third party vendor. A new survey finds most Americans like their job, but they do worry about keeping it. Researchers from the Pew Research Center interviewed more than 5,000 people. They found 49% of Americans are satisfied with their job, another 30 are somewhat satisfied, but Americans are also worried they could get fired. 63% say they have less job security now than in the past. One minute 
That's how long a human being spends with your packages before they leave an Amazon shipping facility. Reporters from CNN Money recently toured a packaging center. Most of the work is done by robots and automated systems. Small robots pick up shelves of inventory, then bring them to packing employees. Once a human packs a box, a machine splits out the or spits out the perfect amount of packing tape. The last time a human touches the package is while loading it onto a delivery truck. Threatening graffiti at a Davis County school, how it all ties into nationwide concerns about people dressed as clowns. A body discovered wrapped up in a plastic sheet right here in Butterfield Canyon. Coming up next, we'll tell you what police are saying. And reading, writing, arithmetic, and now breakfast. Why some Utah schools are bringing the morning meal into the classroom. Live from Fox 13 Studios, this is Live at 530. Unified police are trying to figure out how a body wound up in Butterfield Canyon wrapped in plastic. Police say a passerby in a remote area of the canyon spotted the body yesterday. Fox 13's Robert Boyd is at the mouth of Butterfield Canyon in Harriman this afternoon. Robert. Well, Hope and Bob, Unified Police are calling this a suspicious death. Uh, this man's body was discovered about four miles up the road here behind me, right in the middle of Butterfield Canyon. And police still have a lot of unanswered questions, like who is this man, how did he die, and how did his body end up in this canyon? Police say someone hiking or hunting in Butterfield Canyon yesterday made the unusual discovery. A bypasser located some type of bundle package that was in, a, in plastic. Police weren't sure what it was at first, but they had a pretty good idea it was some sort of body. Maybe an animal, maybe a human. Uh, to preserve evidence, they kept it bundled up. The suspicious package was unwrapped at the medical examiner's office this morning, where it was determined it was the body of an adult man. Police spent the majority of the day canvassing the area, looking for evidence, but they did have some challenges. Obviously, with, with the weather that we've had lately, it's going to make it quite difficult. Any objects, items, prints, anything that we can find. The body has yet to be identified. Police say it appears someone wrapped it in plastic and dumped it in these woods. They're asking anyone with information to contact them. Now, I also spoke with some hikers today who uh, trek through this canyon on a regular basis. Coming up tonight at 9 o'clock, we're going to hear their thoughts on this discovery. Live at Butterfield Canyon, Robert Boyd, Fox 13 News, Utah. The Salt Lake County Council is concerned. Recorder Gary Ott is suffering from health issues and being manipulated by his staff. A recent audit found Ott has very little oversight or involvement in his office. And when those results were presented to Ott this week, county councilors became even more concerned about his health. Who is your chief deputy? And he turned and looked to the woman sitting next to him and he said, I don't remember your name. In response to an interview requ request, Ott sent us a statement reading in part, quote, the audit clearly states that the office is meeting its statutory duties and functioning in a manner beneficial to the public. The allegations we have heard go beyond the scope of the audit and are personal attacks, unquote. New at five, parents are taking their children out of school in the wake of clown threats. Graffiti at Fairfield Junior High in Kaysville scared many children and their parents. Fox 13's Danica Lawrence is at the school right now. Danica, what was it about the vandalism that scared them? Bob, it was what the word said that was painted on different entrances here at the school. Words like ha ha, joker, and also a few more words having to do with clowns. And it scared so many children, 60 of them were pulled out of this junior high school today. And I want to let you know that we don't have any pictures of the graffiti or video of it because we don't want to create another copycat situation. While dozens of children felt too uneasy staying at school. Some people in my classes got picked up. I think their parents were more like scared than them. Others like sister and brother Abby and Will Youngberg finished the day. I think they were just looking for an excuse to go home. After school, their mother Christina picked them up. She knew they were safe all day in class. My kids did ask to be picked up and I thought um, in my heart of hearts, I didn't feel like it was a real threat. Mm -hmm. I thought if it was a real threat and the school was 
really that worried we would have gotten a text or a phone call. The graffiti covered three entrances to the school saying inappropriate words like uh, ha 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 joker real clowns will die that sort of stuff. People these days have to understand what is a legitimate information source and what is not and uh, this is what's created the hysteria that we are facing today. The district worked with police to find whoever did it, but didn't feel anyone's safety was ever at risk. I think this is an important time to have a conversation with their kids. Uh, you know, frankly, this is nothing short of bullying and cowardice. At the end of the day, even Will and Abby believe the clown scare is nothing but a joke. It just might be like ninth graders or high schoolers or something. We talked to Kaysville police and they do have a bigger presence here at the school, especially today. They had their resource officers vehicle parked right outside so you could see that police charger sitting out there. They just want everyone to know that they are here. They're being preventative by being out here and being active. We're now we're live in Kaysville. Danica Lawrence, Fox 13 News, Utah. Thank you, Danica. There is new information about a deadly crash in Logan that sent two people to the hospital in critical condition last evening. Police have identified the victim as 43-year-old Yolanda Lopez of Logan. Her 18-year-old daughter remains in critical condition. Police say a truck ran a red light at the intersection of Main Street and 2200 North. That truck driver wasn't hurt, but will be cited and could face criminal charges. A missing hiker was found dead in American Fork Canyon early this morning. The body of 60-year-old Arthur Wiseman of Cedar Hills was found on a trail near the Granite Flat campground. Wiseman left home at about 5 yesterday afternoon for a short hike but never returned. While the cause of his death is unknown, authorities do not think his death is suspicious. In southern Utah, investigators are figuring out what caused 24,000 pounds of glass to fall on a man. The St. George News reports the accident occurred at a glass production facility. A delivery driver was helping unload some glass when it shattered. A medical helicopter took him to a hospital, no word on his condition. Two people are in police custody after a sting operation in southern Utah this week. Officers tell the St. George News they arrested 33-year-old John Paul Alcott and 24-year-old Kylie Maxey. Now both are suspected of forcing a 15-year-old girl to perform sex acts for money. Investigators say Alcott confessed. Both faced a judge today on felony charges. A small earthquake shook homes in south central Utah today. The three magnitude quake struck about 14 miles northwest of Escalante in Garfield County. That's about 70 miles northeast of Cedar City. The U.S. Geological Survey says earthquakes of this size are usually felt by people and can knock over objects but rarely cause any structural damage. Your next power bill could be a little lower. The Utah Public Service Commission approved a rate decrease for Rocky Mountain Power customers. That means the average home should see about $7 in savings each year. Rocky Mountain Power says they ended up spending less on fuel than expected, so they are passing the savings on to consumers. People looking for the perfect place to retire might want to think twice about the Beehive State. Utah is one of the least tax-friendly states in the country, according to Kiplinger.com. It rates states on several factors. One of the reasons Utah makes the list is because Social Security benefits are taxed as income. The state also has a sales tax that costs retirees a lot of money. We had some showers that rolled through parts of the state earlier today. We still have a few out there along the Idaho border. We'll get to those in a second. Let's first of all take a look at where Matthew is at this point. <clears throat> you can see it moving into Grand Bahamas right now. And uh, there have been wind gusts uh, right around 98 miles an hour that have been reported in this area. Um, here's a look at the strongest part of the storm. You can see that red wrapped around the eye right there. And uh, that's, that's where you get the storm surge and that's, uh, that's not something you wanna see. Uh, on an island. Uh, also, you can see the heavy precipitation that's wrapped around the entire storm as you just move a little bit further north and we have storms all the way up to Daytona Beach, uh, all the way into Jacksonville. We have precipitation associated uh, with this storm, so a large storm. 
All right, the clearing skies, as I mentioned, over Utah right now, and and you look at some of these showers that tried to or that did roll through earlier. Or, yeah, had some weak showers that rolled through the southern end of the Salt Lake Valley right there, uh, a couple just south of Ogden as well, and over the higher elevations, uh, and then a few showers along the Utah Idaho border. Everything is dissipating, and we're just looking for an increasing. Uh, clearing out there and and showers will continue to die out. 24 hour temperature change, warmer temps along the Wasatch Front than 24 hours ago, a little bit cooler in parts of southern and eastern Utah. All the temperatures will be headed up in the forecast. We'll take a look at that coming up. In the race for a Salt Lake County Council seat, one candidate refused to debate. His opponent took matters into her own hands. Catherine Cantor is trying to unseat Councilman Richard Snellgrove. She says they had offers from nonpartisan groups to hold debates, but Snellgrove declined. Today, Cantor held a press conference to address their differences and her positions. But my issue with Mr. Snellgrove is that I feel like he doesn't have a broad enough perspective to address some of the very complex issues that the county will be facing over the next six years. Cantor adds their biggest differences lie in criminal justice reform, homelessness, and Wasatch Mountain planning. Just hours after a major shutdown of I-15 yesterday, another major freeway had to close in the Salt Lake Valley. Downed power lines caused a closure on the west belt of I-215 overnight. The Utah Highway Patrol says at about 10 last night, a construction crane hit a power line on I-215 near 2600 south. The damaged line was then snagged by a dump truck and dragged across all the lanes of the freeway. Troopers shut down the freeway in both directions to keep people safe while crews fixed the damage. It was quite a mess, but thankfully uh, everyone responded quickly. We got everything closed off. Rocky Mountain Power responded uh, quickly, got everything uh, taken care of, and we actually were able to open it up in one of the quicker amounts of time I've ever seen on a closure. No one was hurt. One car had minor damage from hitting the lines. Some people lost power for about an hour. Rocky Mountain Power says the power was restored within about an hour last night. Bringing breakfast into the classroom. Why several Utah schools are getting involved in a new program. And later in sports, we'll check in with the Utes. The basketball team, that is, is Larry Kay and a new crop prepare for their November start. Plus, she may be the best collegiate soccer player in the nation. But what's next for BYU's Ashley Hatch? She got a big honor. Back this is Fox 13 News. Feed a child's body before you feed their mind. That's the idea behind a program aimed at providing breakfast to Utah students in the classroom. Fox 13's Tamara Vifanua has the story. For years, Woodrow Wilson Elementary has offered its students breakfast before school starts at their cafeterias. But since moving breakfast into the classrooms, teachers have noticed a huge difference. We Mrs. Layton's fourth grade class begins each day with a salute and a hearty breakfast. It's very quick and efficient. The students know what to do. We've got our routine. We listen to calm music. Two years ago, 35 schools in Granite School District switched from offering breakfast in the cafeteria to the classroom. They realized many students weren't taking advantage of the free meal. Either they were embarrassed or couldn't fit it in. Our participation levels were less because parents had to get kids to school earlier, they had to walk faster to school, or the buses had to get there in time. The idea is to make sure students can fuel their brains with the most important meal of the day. We have to feed our bodies before we can feed our minds. Mrs. Layton notices students are much calmer. Namaste. Namaste. They feel a sense of community and perform better in the classroom. I just feel like our day starts off much more productive. Students offered their own opinions. What was it like before we had breakfast in our classroom, Tiara? It was really noisy and kind of crowded because like, there was only a certain amount of de uh, seats to sit at for the whole school. In the lunchroom, um, you could be late for class in, in here you know that you want to be late. Utah is one of nine states who can apply for a grant to fund the program in its schools. Muwata. Muwata. At Granite School District, the investment is worth it. 
The more students that we can impact and make the teacher's day go better, that's what we want to do. For more information about how schools can apply for grants for Breakfast in Classrooms program, go to our website, fox13now.com. In Salt Lake City, Tamara Vaifanua, Fox 13 News, Utah. Families in St. George now have a new place to hang out. A ribbon cutting was, is scheduled at the Thunder Junction All Abilities Park on Saturday. City leaders tell the St. George News the park has been years in the making and was designed to accommodate children with disabilities. Some of the features include a sensory garden, wheelchair accessible features, and a small train. The STEM program is using magic to get students excited about science, technology, engineering, and math. Today, the STEM Action Center held its first of a kind assembly at Rosemond Elementary in Riverton. Scientists made rabbits appear, worms come alive, and created optical illusions demonstrating how a STEM category creates each one. It's important to establish it now at elementary age um, because it, it follows them into middle and high school. You see girls especially and boys kind of lose that passion for science and technology and engineering and math. Experience as kid to be able to grow up and, ha and help the world. I want to be a vet. Huh. What a sweetheart. <laughs> STEM will take this assembly to schools across the state to try and get students excited about possible careers in those fields. She's going to be a doctor. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't think most people realize that Brett Benson was that age when he wanted to become a weatherman. That's in that promo. Yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> I remember report, the picture. The <laughs> report I did on the water cycle. How yeah. old were you? It was uh, like, I don't know, fourth grade. <laughs> fourth yeah. fifth grade. And see, kids, what will happen to you? Don't if follow, you follow do not your dreams. Follow in my footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. Um, yeah, and, and following that magician's footsteps. He has a lot of fun. That guy is pretty funny. I've well, seen you him. have a lot of fun yeah. too. Yeah, he's a good. Yeah, I do. I have I have my moments. That yeah. is for sure. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Matthew. And, and we showed, okay, so a little bit earlier in the newscast, we showed satellite and radar, and you get a, 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 an idea for how big the storm is, right? I mean, we, as I mentioned, we had, we had uh, you know, thunderstorms that were up in Jacksonville associated with this storm. But it really is the eye that, that is, is where you see the most damage. It's not that that's the only place you see damage, but it is where you see the most. Uh, so that's why it's so important to try and figure out where this is going to make landfall. It's making landfall over Grand Bahamas at this time. Um, 140 mile an hour sustained winds. The storm will just go right up the coast. And again, it's right in this, uh, right now the thinking is right around Daytona Beach is where uh, this eye could make landfall. And you'll notice the cone of uncertainty is much smaller than it's been. Uh, so it's going to be right in this general area. And, and at this point, the, uh, again, the idea would be that we want the eye to get out of the water uh, because if it just stays in the water, it will continue to stay at the same strength. So we're category four, category three, all the way up the coast and still the forecast right now brings it back around and could return it to the Bahamas and to portions of Florida as a tropical storm eventually. We'll just keep watching it. We have uh, some clouds that are rolling through northern Utah. We did have a few showers that dropped through earlier today. Everything's wrapping up. You can see the clear skies in the south. And we're going to change the pattern a bit. Instead of having a big, big trough over the west, we're going to flatten that out. And we're going to see uh, uh, more of a zonal flow directly from the west towards the east. Meaning a couple things. Number one, uh, we're going to continue to warm things up. And number two, we're going to dry things out. So again, scattered showers about. You can see a few right here along the Idaho border, but everything dying out. And we'll continue to do so heading into the evening hours tonight. 48 in, in Heber, 57 in Salt Lake, and 50s all along the Wasatch Front. Uh, we look at eastern Utah, 50s and low 60s around Blanding, upper 60s in Page, 50s going to 60s, going to low 70s throughout western Utah and uh, right there in the upper 50s around Windover uh, and Elko and Ely. Temperatures dropping into the 30s and 20s for much of the state tonight. It will be a chilly one. We'll call it mostly clear to clear. A few clouds lingering around southwest Wyoming and northeast Utah. Tomorrow, all right, we start warming things up. Mid 60s, upper 60s, low 60s around Windover, near 70 degrees in Elko. Uh, we have 50s and 60s here uh, in eastern Utah, 70s in Milford and Cedar City, low 80s in St. George. Lots of sunshine, a beautiful day tomorrow. And, and you look at it going into the weekend, we're in great shape. Now by Sunday, a little moisture starts working its way back into southern Utah. 
So I added some clouds. We could see a few isolated mountain showers both on Sunday and Monday, but a better chance of thunderstorms rolls in on Tuesday and Wednesday, and you'll notice temperatures just stay uh, pretty uniform right there in the upper 80s. For northern Utah, upper 60s and then a great weekend in front of us. So we're, we're good all the way through the weekend. Partly cloudy on Monday looks great as well. And then that moisture works its way into northern Utah as well. Start to see a chance of some uh, some thunderstorms developing by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And it, we just heard 264 people died because of Matthew already. Yes, yeah. that's in Haiti. It just, just in Haiti. Haiti. Haiti was 108. And, and just now CNN confirmed 264 oh, now. And, and, the, and the, the images you see out of Haiti and oh, Cuba, just awful. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's awful. All right. All right. Well, we'll have more later. Yep. Utah Hoops is still over a month out, but they are on the court now tuning up a team with a very new look from a year ago. The Utes with only a handful of returners this season after a slew of off-season transfers like Brett Cott Chapman, leaving some fans wondering what in the world's going on. Lorenzo Bonham, Kyle Kuzma, and Gabe Beeler all do return, but after that, names get really hard to recognize. Coach Larry Kraskoviak brought in a new Jakob to fill up the middle. This one, Jakob Yokel from the Czech Republic, and a Utah State transfer, David Collette, will be eligible to play by mid-December. I can tell you from experience already, this is my first time with a new team. It doesn't take long, you know, going in and out every day. It doesn't take long to come together at all. You know, I try to, you know, do what Brand Taylor, DeLon Wright, Jordan Lovers, um, you know, what they all did for me and try to help me find my way. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to do with these new guys. There aren't going to be people that are uh, placed on any kind of pedestal above anybody else and uh, Kuz has got a ways to go still so does Lorenzo. The consistency right now is the big thing. We'll have one practice and maybe three or four guys shine in that practice. Coach K also expects the slick transfer Tyler Rawson and JJ Zamora to play big roles this season. BYU may or may not have their best defensive player on the field Saturday in East Lansing. Sophomore linebacker Butch Powu has been declared a game time decision against Michigan State. Powu leads the Cougars with 42 tackles. He missed the Toledo game after injuring his knee against West Virginia week four. A couple of soccer players with Utah ties have been called up to join the U.S. national team, including BYU star Ashley Hatch. On Monday, Hatch recorded her third hat trick of the season and currently leads the nation with 15 goals to her name. The Jill Ellis coach Americans are prepping for back-to-back -back friendlies against Switzerland, the first of which takes place on October 19th at Rio Tinto Stadium. Also called up Alta High Product, Kaalia Ojai, who currently plays professionally for the Houston Dash. In round two of the MLB playoffs underway, game one between the Rangers and Blue Jays. Toronto with a two-out rally in the third. Josh Donaldson goes off the glove. Too hot for Adrian Beltre to handle at third, scoring Ezekiel Carrera with four more following suit in the frame alone, including this bases loaded triple by Troy Tulowitzki. Everyone and their great aunt Betsy will cross home plate. Jose Batista added four RBIs as Texas gets smoked at home 10 to 1. The Red Sox and Indians go later, of course, the World Series again right here. Right here on Fox 13. October 25th, I what, think is what Was that was. great Aunt Betsy with the uh, beard there? Yeah, right, the, the facial beard. hair yeah, here. Number little, 33. A little below the ears. All right. Morgan, thanks. We'll be right back. Fox 13 is teaming up with Lagoon to get you some free tickets. All you need to do is open your Fox 13 app, click on Frightmares, then look for the daily keyword. Scroll down and enter once a day. The contest ends next Wednesday, October 12th. If you don't have the Fox 13 app yet, download it anytime between now and then to enter. Thanks for watching Fox 13 News Live at 5. We hope to see you tonight for Fox 13 News at 9. Until then, have a good one. Bye bye.